All right, cool, boom. The checkup, we are back, yeah? And this one is powered by Benja, my absolute bros, yeah? And um, before I even get started, the person that I've got with me today is someone I've wanted to have a conversation with for such, for a strong minute now. And like, I'm very grateful, not only is he sitting on the couch with me, but I'm grateful at the, at the fact that it's come at a time where there's new music and that as well. Loyal Kana, how you doing, my bro? You Yo. good? Just happy to be here. Bro, before we start, this is for you. Yeah. Ben Jarts gifted this for you, so don't let me forget that, yeah? Appreciate it. Honourable shout out to them. Appreciate it. How are you, my bro? I'm good, yeah, my album's out now. I'm just, yeah, I'm excited to just move on to the next thing and let this not be mine anymore. Yeah, yeah. And let the world have it. Scary, yeah. but nice. It's mad, like, so like, that's what my intro was essentially like, you're back, you've taken, you've taken a nice little time away, mm -hmm. I guess, to live life, be a dad. Right, right. You do all of these type of things or whatnot, yeah? Mm -hmm. And I even, I remember seeing a tweet from you saying something about like, I hope I'm not being away for too long. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I feel like that every time. I remember feeling like that before my first, my second album. And that one, I was, you know, we, would, we were just touring all year and then I dropped another album, so it wasn't even that long. Mm. But I think there's always, because of the way the industry moves now and the way people's attention spans are, it's like if you're not constantly feeding the beast, mm. sometimes you can slip out of consciousness, you know what I mean? So it's a, it's, a, it's a fear for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have thought so too, but I feel, I feel like now you've worked yourself into a very interesting position and I've talked about it a lot on the pod as well. Okay. I've always mentioned that like, You've got such a engaging um, fan base that is like so in touch of what it is that you're doing that you're like one of the few people I believe that could take a moment away. You could take a moment away and come back and it not affect things too much. Appreciate and you that. do understand that like the majority of artists could not do that. Like I, there's that constant feeling of like, you know what, I need to keep, I need to keep being outside because once this or once I stop, yeah. everything stops. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's real. But even I feel that and I understand, I understand it. And I feel for artists in that also, you know, are caught up in that. Cause I think the issue is, I think the more you lean into it, the worse it gets. Yeah, fine. Do you know what I mean? It's like, I love Drake and I love Kendrick Lamar, right? But they both have built a separate thing because Kendrick has built a thing where I'm gonna go away for five years, yeah, and that's my thing, and then I'm gonna come back and you're gonna respect me when I come back. Drake has a thing where like you cannot move without hearing Drake. Do you know what I mean, he's he's constantly in your life, and Kendrick's constantly out of your life, mm. and it's just two different ways of operating. Mm. But for me, like for my brain, there's no way I could operate like Drake. Right. I respect it, I love it, but I couldn't do it. Yeah, yeah. Because I don't know how I would find any inspiration if I'm constantly like in front of the camera. Right. I think, I think there's certain artists that take inspiration in different ways, and mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. Drake probably takes more inspiration from actually being outside. Yeah, exactly. Whereas like... And it feeds into the music, and that's why it, it right. connects with so many people. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Whereas you, you need that. I need to... Let me just... Let me do life mm -hmm. for a bit. Let me come back and then talk about stuff. Bro, do you know what I want to do? I want to get straight into the album, to be honest with you. Yeah. The album was sent to me. Yes. The album was sent to me, yeah? Sick. 10 songs. Yeah. And I went through it and I was like, I was so impressed, bro. I was, so, bro, honestly, I was so impressed. I appreciate that. And I was like, it, this was interesting to me because it's like, when I listen to your second album, yeah, the feel is completely different, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Even from the way that it starts. Yeah. yeah. yeah dear Gene, it's like, yeah. it starts off very smooth. Soft, um, yeah, yeah, it's yeah, very yeah. soft and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, I've had a conversation with someone just recently where we was talking about like the, the third album thing. And I was saying for certain artists, like coming back on your third album, this is the time where, you know what? You can take a risk. Yeah. You can say certain things. You can, you've, you've earned the right to be able to say or feel exactly how you feel and express it in the way that you want to. True. Do you get what I'm yeah. saying? And you did that. Yeah. I had to. I just, like, I, I guess I felt lucky enough to still be able to do this. Do you know what I mean, not everyone gets a chance to make a third album and know that they might get a chance to tour it and some people might listen. Mm. So it was like, you know, being a father and being a bit older, it was like, let me start thinking about not what happens right now if I'm going to get a number one, all this nonsense, but actually, like, I've never thought about that, but definitely wasn't in my head for this. It was just like, 
I don't know. Let me see what like where, where this. Hopefully, if I make it the way I, where I the way I made it, it could still exist in ten years, twenty years, right. thirty years. Right. I wasn't thinking about now. Yeah. Almost, I was thinking about when my son's eighteen and he hears it. Right. If it can still tap in and connect, you know. The theme of it felt like I felt hate. I felt love. Mm -hmm. I felt confusion. Yeah. Like talk on that. Like talk on the theme of this project. Yeah, I think, do you know what it was, is that, so it was kind of inspired by, I didn't have much inspiration for a while. You know, we had toured and then it was locked down and I was like, I wasn't feeling to, to write about much, so I wasn't writing. And then my girlfriend fell pregnant. And so all this new wave of contemplation and questions and trying to figure out who I was, trying to become a better person, forced me to reconnect with my pups, really. That's like the right. crux of the album. Um, but yeah, on, on a personal thing, yeah, it was just like, I wanted to, express a 360 of, of myself and the beauty in the ugliness at times. Because I think I always used to try and put my best foot forward and be squeaky clean and, you know, be like, oh, everything's fine. I'm a lovely guy. And that's not, that's not a lie. I'm a nice guy. But that's not, that's not the 360. Do you know what I mean? Everybody has the potential to be good and bad. Some days they're positive, some days they're negative. And, and yeah, I just, it was refreshing for myself to let out some of the uglier parts of myself. 100%. Yeah. This is why I feel like this was perfect for you, bro. Because it was like, as well, that, that nice guy thing. You yeah. know, a lot of people have, that, people have tagged you as that, innit? Like, yeah, oh yeah, yeah like the, he's the nicest guy in rap and whatever. Yeah, and it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. see, for me, as someone who like, I'm always peeling back the layers and watching stuff, I'm like, no, I hear that and that's cool. But I mm -hmm. know there's something, there's something deeper within that, though. For sure. This nice guy thing is cool. Like, it's nice to... It's, it's obviously better to be known as a nice guy to, than to be known as a prick. Yeah, fact. Do you get what I'm saying? Fact. But, no, like, don't ever get it, get it twisted. This person feels something and has been through certain things mm -hmm. and probably doesn't have it all figured out. No, I think that's, that, that's the biggest thing. The, the figured out thing is, like, I think everyone looks at me and goes, oh, Rod, guy's so happy all the time, guy loves his mum, whatever, so he must just be nice. And right. I think... That's the thing that's frustrating. The, the nice guy thing is not frustrating. That's wonderful. That's what I always wanted. That's what my mum raised me to leave the house and come across like that so I could get my foot in the door in certain places and work with people because I'm nice to be around. You get right, me? Right. But yeah, the, the, the thing that was feeling limiting was just, yeah, like people not, exp I don't know, just maybe almost not allowing me to feel certain things and not like me not being able to step into certain places being like, oh, well, you can't really touch that because you know, everything's figured out for you. You know, we're trying to figure this out over here, mm. but you already got it made. Mm. So it was nice, yeah, just to be able to express and reflect, you know, to share the community, like the, the conversations of my community, you get me? I made notes. This was the next thing. Um, when I was talking to your manager, mm -hmm. I was like, it's expressive, it's deep, it's different mm -hmm. for you. Um, it's impressive, but I actually meant the, the production is expressive, like even from... Straight away, I'm like, nah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like, and I heard this from the video that you dropped for a couple of months ago. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I never heard it, I never heard it with headphones on. I watched it and I was like, oh shit, like, mm -hmm. you know, like he's saying some stuff. Mm -hmm. But when putting headphones on and listening to it from that perspective, right, right. actually, made it a whole different experience for yeah. me. Um, and you started off straight away. Let me tell you what I hate. Yeah. Yeah, it was just, I think this was probably one of the first songs that I made. Like the album was pretty much made in chronological order, do you know what I mean? So I started in quite a bad spot. I was in, I was in quite a hateful place. And that's one of the first songs I ever made from that place of just like an expression of anything other than like love or, you know, like grief or whatever, but actually like, visceral, you know, like mm. urgent, like attacking sounds. So mm. yeah, it, it was something that like, for, for me, it was one of those songs I was making over lockdown when I thought no one was ever gonna hear it. Mm. I didn't make it for anyone really. It was, it just felt really good in the car to listen to. Mm. You know what I mean, when like, me and my girl had an argument or I fell out of my mum's or whatever, I was just tired, just get in the car and drive and just play it on repeat and just speak it to myself. And it was like a, it was like a justification of how I felt, mm. like, it just made me feel good, like a, cathar a catharsis, mm. you know, to just be like, I feel like this, I'm saying how I feel. Was this like, was it a calculated thing as well? See, like when you was getting into the third album thing, did mm. you, had you already known before that you were gonna, you know, really deep dive into 
like certain things that was on your mind before or did, did it literally just start from when you were, was in this place? I think there was, it was 50-50 because I was reading a book by Questlove right. um, called The Creative Quest and there's a part in it where, or maybe it's his autobiography because I read that too, but there's a bit where he said he used to write the review he wanted to get for his album okay. before, before he made his album. So I did it. I wrote a review of, of this third album before I started it. And I think part of it was just, you know, all I wanted to tap into when I, when I reread it um, before I went into the studio was just like, all I wanted was to tap into not only anger, but just to be, make sure that it was, I justified and, and um, completed my mission of, of, I don't know, it was not even completed my mission, fulfilled my emotion, like fulfilled the expression of my anger and, expressed it in a way that was believable, truthful, so that I could listen back to this album at the end and go, this is exactly how I felt. Mm. Not like, this is a bit how I felt, but also it will hit the radio, or do you know what mm. I mean? It, it'll be good for the clubs or whatever. Radio's like, not your thing, though. No, not really, but we get plays on the radio. Do you know what I mean? We've always been on the playlist on the radio, but I, I never really thought about the radio ever when I've been making music. That's what I mean, though. Yeah. Like, you're not someone who makes music for... No, 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 not DSP at all. So much like I just don't, I don't really make music for anyone. Do, do, do you know what I mean? Like, not that I don't want people to listen, but the reason I make it I guess I used to think I did. I used to think, oh, I make this so I could, when I was younger, like, whatever. Meet girls, go play shows, travel the world. And then in lockdown, I was like, sitting there thinking, okay, there's no shows, nothing's happening. I'm probably not going to make music anymore then because all the things that I'm getting from it, I'm not going to get anymore. And I was surprised in myself that I just didn't stop. Mm. And more and more, I was able to just create solely for myself. And this album is probably the purest that that's been because when I was making it, there was no promise of shows or release mm. or whether people will still show up for me because I've been gone for a minute. So it was like, if I'm making this, I was aware in my head, I was like, if I'm making this, I'm only making this for myself, mm -hmm. you know? I said I fucking hate time. Yeah, they said that it was all that you could be if you were black, make it ball or maybe rap. And they would say it like a fact. All my people in the back, all the nurses in the front, all my teachers where you at? Cause we've been living like a trap, but the numbers on the wall, hoping people will react. But it's a fact, we've been living in the trap, with traps. I hate, I love, hate the ones who think that they're above. My grandfather told me never trust in them, but I do. You're the ones I shouldn't chew, I start with them, this is it. Still, I see men hit women who hit back, all them couldn't give a shit. Hit them but won't crack under pressure with this shit feeling. Uh, hey, yo, this shit feeling, listen, yo, I fear women. I fear love, religion. I fear drugs, the feeling. I love that bit as well. But you started by the second verse by saying they said it was all you could be if you were black. Yeah, yeah. Talk on that. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's weird. Like this album, I've, that was that was something that I've been thinking about a lot. It's just a conversation. Play ball or rap. Yeah, right? yeah. It was just this thing of like being at school, and you know, by by being it like kind of in between also because I'm mixed race. You get me. But the teachers, when I remember just being at careers day once, one of the teachers just being like to me, "Oh, there's no football coach here. There's no whatever. There's no rap school here. I mean, I don't know what you're gonna go talk to." And they were joking. But it's this, it's a fulfilling prophecy. And I thought it was interesting because I'm saying it as a rapper. Do you know what I mean? I'm not saying it like as a, a poet laureate or as a novelist or yeah. a neuroscientist or whatever. Do you know what I mean? I'm, I'm here as a rapper saying, they said all I could be was this or football and, I, and I, I'm one of them. You know? right. I guess it was, just, it was just me thinking about, okay, so if I was at school and they told me that I could have been a novelist or I could have written plays or whatever, would I be now here doing this or would I have found my love of words and bent the words in a different way, in a different discipline. Right. You know? Yeah, because it's almost like, you know what? Rap music probably sa it saved your life, right? Hell yeah, yeah. And introduced me to everybody that, like all the people around me that I'm the closest to, yeah. let me see the world. It gave me, gave me a lot. Yeah. But it doesn't always work out for everyone. And no, I guess no, there's no, that no, whole, no. that other aspect of like, rah, if at, growing up in a, at a certain generation, mm -hmm and just hearing that these are what you're essentially limited to, mm -hmm. it limits your vision of being able to aspire to be in anything outside of, outside of that when, you know, there's so, like some of us may not be skilled with rapping, but we could be skilled in so many different ways. But if, we're, if, the, if we don't channel that or yeah. we're not told or we're not, you know, we don't see it, then it's mm -hmm. hard to be it, right? And it's also, there's no, yeah, there's no, there's no praise, even within the community, do you know what I mean, of this thing, because it's, it's internalised that there's no expression of, like, 
yo, like, if I say, hey, I'm thinking about doing X, Y, Z, like, oh, I want to be a chef or whatever, no one was around me was going like, yo, you could do that. Because no one, like, no one sees it, so then no one's believing it within themselves. So then when their homie says it to them, they're like, oh, but don't do that. Mm. Like, we don't do that. I mean, you can't do that. Mm. But there's no, there's no reason why you can't. That was, the, that was the frustration with me at school, is that how much of a relief, you know, if you could be, if you think about any classroom, right? If you, I always say this, like this analogy, my mum used to say to me, like, you've got a class full of goldfish, and there's one monkey in the class, and you tell the class to swim, the monkey's going to come last, right? But if you tell that same class to climb the tree, the monkey's top of the class. Right. And this was the thing that I grew up in, was that like, the reason I started the cooking school and all these things was because I wanted to find a space where I could give kids like myself that weren't given the praise or attention or uplift or self-belief that they needed at school, a space where they can just be praised. Because yeah. as soon as you say to a kid, no matter, wh no matter what it's for, you're really good at this. They begin to go, okay, holy shit, I'm good at this. That means I could probably be good at that. I could make money from this. Do you know what I mean? And then as you begin to build self-worth and you build confidence, it just, it's like, I don't know, it's contagious. Mm. Do you know what I mean? That then passes on to their friends, which then passes on to their brothers and sisters at home, uncles, aunt, like whatever. Mm. It was, yeah, it's just, it was weird. I was in a bad spot though when I made this tune. So I was like, finally just, signed, I guess, saying some shit that I needed to say for a long time. What, put, like, what, what exactly put you in that spot? Uh, well, I was, we, we was in lockdown anyways, I f I'm pretty sure. Mm. So it was, that was already hard. You know, it was just me and my girl in the crib and like I, I needed to be out in, in the outdoors. I mean, mm. I needed some space to walk around and I wasn't really getting that. So I think, you know, I got ADHD and, you know, like, like anyone, I think mm. I was going through my own like just mental battles of feeling anxious, feeling isolated, feeling stressed out. But on top of that, you know, I had this impending... Um, life coming into my life and mm. I, was, I wasn't sure, I wasn't very close with my pops when, when I started making this album and I just wasn't sure if I was going to do a good job and this is like I always wanted to be mm. perfect. Do you know what I mean? When I was, I was like, you know, I grew up without my pops and I was like, when I'm a father, I'm going to be perfect. And that's never possible but no. it's the thing you tell yourself, right? Yeah, yeah. I was 25 and my girlfriend was pregnant so I was like, okay, shit, why am I not perfect yet? Because this is when I wanted to have kids but I was like, I'm not perfect yet, what am I going to do? And so, I guess the album and my life was on this journey of like, not how can I become perfect, but how can I love myself right. for the flawed, for the flawed person I am and be kind to myself. Do you know what I mean? And keep showing up every day. And some of it is like, it's even the, like the hate aspect. Mm -hmm. Like some of it is just letting go of that, right? Letting go of some of the hate. Mm -hmm. You mentioned like, you know, love. Like, and I, it's just weird because it's like, I feared, but I feared, I feared love. Mm -hmm. I feared, I feared religion at a point. Mm -hmm. um, I feared women, mm -hmm. but I feared women in the sense of like being scared to be vulnerable mm -hmm. with someone. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Is that where the aspect of where like a lot of that comes from as well? Yeah. I mentioned that. I mean, the idea of the song is that hate is rooted in fear, right? Right. And we fear what we don't understand. So. It, yeah, it was like, the song, when I first wrote it, was just all about what I hated. And then I was thinking, how can I, how can I flip this into a way where it's a lesson to my son or to anyone who listens without it being preachy? Mm. It was that, it was just to be honest, that like, all these things that I'm saying I hate, these are all things I'm scared of. Right. Do you know what I mean? Because it's easy and I do that, I used to do that all the time. Like, I don't know, anything, like I've, I've been recently, I've been getting, not taken, because I don't, I don't do drugs, but I've been really interested in um, psychedelics for... Um, oh my God, Callum, I swear as well. He's heard me say, I've, like, I'm super interested in psychedelics. Yeah, by yeah, the way. yeah, yeah. But I don't take them. Yeah, me neither. But I see that, you know, because psychedelics were initially used and developed for, like, psychotherapy, right? Right. And it was only because certain pockets of, um, like, people working in that field took it out and experimented with it a little bit, like understandably, but started going like sharing it with their friends and whatever. It became this epidemic, this issue that they were, the government's like, okay, we need to shut this down. Mm. But when you look at the work, there's this brilliant documentary called How to Change Your Mind by a guy called Michael Pollan. And he is kind of lining out the, the leaps and bounds that anything, psilocybin, LSD, all of these different things, the, the effect they can have on people who are terminally ill, mm. people who are suffering with anxiety, depression, because you're, at times you're, for like, there's even, there's even this thing with, with MDMA where if you go for a therapy session on MDMA, for people who've been through real trauma, you're associating this dopamine hit, this great feeling you're feeling right. with talking about this darkness. Right. And so, yeah, I don't know, like, I'm, 
I used to I used to say fuck drugs like anyone takes drugs, fuck those guys, right? Because I didn't understand because where I the way where I grew up and the drugs I saw, that was crippling families, it was crippling my family. And I'm seeing guys sell it, then I'm seeing guys get arrested, I'm seeing guys disappear for a long time, and I'm seeing other guys die, right? So to me, where I grew up, drugs is like, cool, you sell it, that's fine. Mm. But don't touch it. And as I got older, I started to see, okay, actually if you flip it and you are in need of it for that world. I have all the love and respect for it. Mm-hmm. Do you know the interesting thing is, is that like, I think, I've been saying as well, that I feel like as people, yeah, we're just getting further and further away from our purest self. I don't know what that actually is. I don't know what the purest self actually is and what it actually, what it really means. But even just tying into what you were just saying there, it's like the problem, the problem actually, actually isn't the psychedelic. The problem is like when you start moving into a capitalist, a capitalist society, where you start looking at, all right, cool, you know what? This was probably used for a certain thing mm-hmm. at a certain time mm-hmm. amongst a certain type of people. Mm-hmm. But then, Rake, how do we monopolize, monopolize yeah, yeah. that and make money out of it and whatnot? And then, exactly. it just, then it becomes a cycle of a problem mm-hmm. um, that we end up having like years down the line. Yeah, I, I, just, yeah, just, I've, I guess just in general, I've just been looking at things with a bit more compassion and trying to understand why people do the things they do and not just condemning them yeah. because they do it. Right. You get me? Because I think it's so easy with anything. You look at something like cancel culture, whatever it's like, you look at someone, see someone make a mistake, big or small, and the initial response is just like, fuck that guy, right. they're done forever. And there's no, like, and in some situations I understand that, but I'm more of the thought of restorative justice, this idea of like, this person's made a mistake, let's educate this person right. so they never make it again because they might have some positive contributions to make to society as well. Absolutely. Do you know what I mean? It's like, just because someone's done something awful doesn't mean they can't do something good tomorrow. Um, there's a brilliant interview of Shia LaBeouf, that's a, a great example of that because he holds himself accountable for all of the awful things that he's done. But it's like, I'm still breathing. Mm. So with every breath I have left, I'm gonna find a way to affect some positive change because I've already affected enough negative change, change, change you know what I mean? And you learn, like, when you're, when you're making, when you're affecting negative change, man, there is the other side of growth where you can then start seeing, okay, rah, like, mm-hmm. there's a lot that you can learn from that and implement it in a different type of way. Yeah. It's a, it's a super interesting one. It's a super interesting one, especially though. Explain yourself what you mean when you say half cast. I'm listening to you with the keen half of my ear. And when I sleep at night, I close half a eye. Consequently, I dream half a dream. And when moon begin to glow, I half cast human being. Cast half a shadow. Famous. Famous poem that yeah, bit. Yeah, yeah. I never, I never heard it at schools. I'm just moving out the sun. Yeah, it's cool. I never, I never heard it. I never, I actually never heard it at in school, school either. Yeah. I know a lot of people heard this poem in school. Yeah, mm-hmm. um, John Agard. It's called Half Cast, right? Um, I never heard it in school. That wasn't something that, that just. I stumbled across this. Yeah, yeah. And then later on, realized that there was a, a, a few people around me that knew it, and then especially some people of an older generation and that. What made you use that? I saw, I only saw this a couple of years ago on YouTube. I just saw a video of it when I was, the uh, first time I went back to Guyana. And then I, I, I was kind of getting into the music from there and some of the other parts of the culture, but the poets, I, I found out about this guy, Martin Carter, who my, my dad thinks I'm related to, and this guy, John Agard. Mm. And when I saw it, what it was was just like, it was the first time I'd ever seen someone, I think ever, who looked like me, reflecting my my lived experience, do you know what I mean? Like telling a story for what it, what it is to be like, not, I've never been seen as a whole. And I think it was interesting, you know, because if I start go from the first song and this is like the third track on the album, there's this idea of like, at the beginning, I'm kind of saying, I don't know, it's kind of, it's kind of almost like at the beginning, I'm, I'm expressing like, yo, this is how the world sees me. They're like, okay, cool, like straight. This guy, this, this young racialized to the world as black, um, can only be these t- these two things and then mm. as you delve a little bit deeper you begin to see the nuance of what I am and I think yeah John expresses it in a way that I just had never seen before mm. and this guy's like 70 so he's he's expressing like my lived experience from you know what I mean however many years ago that things haven't changed that he grew up and still felt like 
you sometimes you see me as this, sometimes you see me as that, but you don't ever see me just as one whole. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah. It's what, always yeah. just the half of something. Get me, yeah. It's always, yeah. It's like you're half cooked, you're half this, you're half that. Yeah. And, you know, I understand it because my mum is white and my dad is black. Like, I understand it. And I'm, no one is questioning it and trying to figure it out more than me. But there's this thing of like, yeah, you're just never, why are we never considered as, you know, like, why is it only when I do certain things, it's like, oh, that's this side speaking. When I do certain things like that, it's, oh, that's that side speaking, you know? Why can I not just be a collection of influences? Because everyone is, you know, regardless of where you come from, you're, co you're just a collection of your influences, you know? Black like the key on the piano, white like the key on the piano. Yeah, uh, small man cast a big shadow, ready on Braco, hard stay dodging from the arrow. Skin of my teeth, late nights I was harrow. Sweet to the bone, to the marrow, the marshmallow. Yeah, wonder why the water's so shallow. The sun was my ally, the night was my gallows. Ah, uh, cooking up the chips in the tallow Invisibility cloak like the hallows Black like tobacco Black like the lungs that my dad smoked away In the days that the hate stayed narrow I'm from the age where the hate seems macro We keep a little oil in the afro The back sparrow Hit the high seas straight like Sopranos The streets still hot like Sopranos Saran wrap around the bad tap So we had to grab the hose Let the cold water flow over man's nose Yeah, I'm black like the key on the piano White like the keys on the piano no, low ammo. The production on this is mad. Crazy, yeah, mad lib. Mad, 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 mad. Mad lib, that's a, that's a hero of mine, man. That's crazy to even be working with him, yeah. How did that come about, you and him? Uh, yo, I met him, I met him when I was like 17 at Lovebox when it was in, still in Finsbury Park. Mm. I think it was in Finsbury Park. And um, my friend Benny Mel, shout out to Benny. He was, he was playing at the festival and Mad Lib was playing as well. Mm. And we were backstage and I just went up to him and was like, yo, thank you for the music. Like, you know what you do when you're a kid? I was like, yo, you changed my life, bro. And he was like, you rap? I was like, hell yeah. So he gave me his number. But back then I didn't know how to save an American number. So he gave me like whatever, like 555, 255, oh, yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was like, that's not a number, bro. But I took it down anyways. <laughs> tried to call it and just went, sorry, this cool, this like cannot be connected. And then I met him again at Outlook a couple years later because we were playing before him. And he gave me the same number and he remembered me. And I was like, okay, cool. So he's, he's giving me something consistent. It's not bullshit, mm. but I couldn't save it again. And then years later, I met Egon who was working with him. Um, at the time, um, serious legend as well, Egon. And he like just, yeah, put like connected the dots and finally I was able to be in contact. And now we've got loads of music together. Mm. Um, but yeah, that's one of the first offerings. Cold, yeah. cold, 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 cold. That's actually one of my favorites on the, on the project. Yeah, same way. Um, but sticking with this just really quickly, yeah? yeah. I just want to go back a little bit. Mm -hmm. when, did you, when did you feel different? Feel different? Um, just at school, I remember being picked, like, just when I went, when I went to school, because I'd get picked up by my mums or my pops, rarely by my pops, but they would pick me up. And I was just, it was just, it just would surprise me when I saw people's parents and everyone's parents look like them. You get me? So I go, I go to school and if, like, when we have parents' evening or, like, whatever, little, the summer festival, summer fair, whatever, like, where I was down at primary school in Streatham, mm. that, like, if, if, like, my friends, like, my African friends, they had African parents, I mean, my Polish friends, they had Polish parents. And I just was like, I didn't, I'd, I had never understood that like, you know, when you're four years old, you don't understand. Like, I just thought kids just pop out, no matter, like they pop out green. Do you know what I mean? It didn't, it didn't matter. You just, you had these, these are your parents, you pop out, you just, you look how you look. Um, yeah, and it was naive, but I guess you are naive when you're young. And so that was the first time I was like, I would look at my mum's and then at my, my stepdad and be like, and I, I didn't really even think about it too tough until other people started pointing it out. Because right. kids are mean, you know what I mean? So then kids start going, oh, like, are you adopted? Are you blah, blah, blah. And for a while I was like, maybe, I don't know. What's, right. a, what's adopted? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's funny, actually. You know, as a kid now, some, you, that's how you learn a word. Yeah. Because you didn't, you may not even have heard adopted before. No, why would and I? It's like, yeah. yeah, okay, boom, I'm like, are you adopted? Now mm. you've taken this word, I don't know, yeah, maybe I might be adopted. Mm. What is adopted? Yeah. Then you understand what adopted means. And yeah. then yeah. you start to look into why, oh, that's why people are saying that yeah, I'm yeah, adopted. Yeah, 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 yeah. Which then, it opens up a whole kind of worms. Like, mm -hmm. oh, like, oh, right, my skin's, like, mm -hmm. I come out a different colour. I'm not the same as every, what, like, the parents look yeah, different. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? It, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it then just opens up a big can of worms. Yeah, right? yeah. Because I think, that, yeah, just as in my, in my crib, I didn't, you know what I mean? I didn't understand, like, really. Yeah, I don't know. And, and sometimes it's like, you know, this conversation my mum I have now and even my mum's like, 
she wished she could have done X, Y, and Z more, educate me more on it. But my mum never, if I never had the tools at school, if my history class wasn't filling me with enough self-worth and self-belief and self-understanding, what can I expect from my mum's history class 30, 40 years before that? I mean, not to put my mum's age out there, but yeah, 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 get yeah, me. Yeah. But do you know what I mean? Like, it was so based that like my mum did the best she could to help, I don't know, prepare me for the world. Wow. But she can't really because she doesn't, she never lived it. You get me? So it's yeah. different. Yeah, it's yeah. different. It's like when, when a parent has a child, you can only pass on certain elements of what you know and what you see and what you might think is right or whatnot. But also, you know what? When a child gets to, especially when a child gets to a certain age, mm. you know, they are partly yours at home, but then they're also out in the community. They're mm. outside. Yeah, they're the worlds. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you went to Guyana to film the video for this, right? Yes. Um, was that the first time you went back? I've been once before. I went back once before with the BBC to do something. Like this that was the thing. first time you went back with the BBC? Yeah, yeah that was the first time. That I must went, have yeah. been interesting because prior to this, obviously, you spent a lot of time and a lot, like, you talked about not having a relationship with your dad mm -hmm. so much, right? Mm -hmm. Being close with your mum, though. Mm -hmm. um, must have been close with that side of the family. Mm -hmm. Travelling to Scotland, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. being around yeah, that yeah. side. Yeah, yeah. Now, going here... Mm and being where a part of your heritage is from mm -hmm. for the first time, not even just with the BBC, but even with this, yeah. this is a different time. Yeah, you're yeah, going yeah. to shoot in a, a video, you're probably being around culture a little bit yeah, differently. Yeah, 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 yeah. How was that? It was magic. I think some of it was like the first time I ever felt real peace and felt like a bit of belonging. Mm. Sometimes not as well, because I think there is also this thing of you go out there thinking like, yeah, I'm gonna go there and everyone's gonna see me as a guy and he's straight, <laughs> like, like no questions asked and, uh -huh. I'm British, you get me? Like, in, 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 in the way I've been raised, like, much like anybody who's grown up here, and, and there's things that, like, there's mannerisms of mine, the way I talk, the things I do, like, where I can't just assimilate instantly. And that was frustrating at the start, because I was expecting to just slip in. And I can until I start speaking, do you know what I mean? Mm. But, yeah, I, I don't know, I, I, it just was so special to me because it, it's, it's a place that's not, like, spoiled by tourism as well. Mm. And it doesn't really have much in the way of, like, Popular culture, references, you know what I mean? So it wasn't something I was seeing. And when I was younger, I was annoyed because I was like, I want to see this place, I want to see it reflected. But what was good is there's no stereotype, there was no image in my head. When I went there, it wasn't anything that I expected, you know what I mean? Because it's a lot of jungle. Right. It's rainforest, it's like, it's, there's a lot of indigenous communities, but there's a lot of mix in there. Right. You know? And like, that was the thing that was the most beautiful is that like, out there, yeah, I'm, I'm mixed or half cast out there, which is weird, they still say they that. Call, they still call you that. Yeah, yeah, bro, Matt, I was playing football with these guys and um, everything was going fine, nice, and then the, like halfway through, they just start going, yo, pass to the half cast boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it, like, it, hit, it hit me at first, and I was like, but no one else batted the eyelid, do you know what I mean? It's right. not, it was no diss, it's a fact. But it was just interesting that like, I think it's so normal out there, yeah. that it's just like, it's not, you know? In certain places where you go to, I guess it, it is, you know what I mean, we move on from it a bit. Do you know, like, that was, I had to change the name of my podcast. Yeah. My, the podcast that I started the poet was called Half Cast, yeah, yeah. Half Cast Podcast and that. Mm -hmm. And at the time when we started this podcast, yeah, there was no pod, it, there wasn't a podcast thing. There, it wasn't, see like how it is now, mm -hmm. everyone's got a podcast mm -hmm. and everyone, people, there's even young people that are like growing up wanting to do a podcast. Yeah. It wasn't like that at all. Mm -hmm. And we just started something and we just came up with like, um, a slogan in the mid, so we knew it was thought, but we knew it was yeah, going to yeah, grab yeah, yeah, attention, yeah, yeah. but do? it just didn't mean anything to do with yeah, that, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then it was probably only until like when we did the 15th episode, I thought, ah, oh, now there's things I want to do with this. Yeah, yeah. You get what I'm saying? Yeah, and it started yeah, to grow yeah, and grow. Yeah, and yeah, as yeah. it grew, mm. there was a little thing in me that was mm, like, mm, I don't know, you know, mm. the name, I just don't know. And yeah, then, yeah. you know, when you, I started to feel uncomfortable yeah. telling people, oh, like people say, oh, like, wait, you, what's, Oh, he does a podcast. What's the name of your podcast again? Yeah, yeah, and you know, yeah, like yeah, when yeah, I started yeah, to yeah. feel like that, I was like, you know what? Mm -hmm. I have to listen to inside here. Always. Yeah, do you get always. what I'm saying? I was like, you know what? I can't even. I can't even do it anymore. Mm -hmm. I couldn't do it anymore. Yeah. But um, it's the power of the words, though, isn't it? Because it's it just it shows what the what the perspective is in the area. Because over there, it's not a thing. Mm -hmm. But over here, when I hear it, it still is like, yo, the dark ages. That's what's so mad about this poem and, and why I used it is because it's kind of it's almost like. Some of the other words that get thrown around in rap music, I mean, that have been reclaimed. It's like, I'm not, I'm not trying to reclaim that word, but it's I like, I hate that. But, but, but there is this, but there is this thing of like, if it's something that's said about me, why can it not be at least referenced in a piece of art? You know what I mean? Right. 
But yeah, it's not. I'm not trying to. In like, context. Yeah, exactly. But I'm not trying. To, I'm not trying to run around and say yeah. it. Say it to I my hate. Friends. I hate the the re, like when people use the reclaiming of the word nigger and stuff like. That. And maybe, maybe, the thing is in bars. This is where I'm hypocritical. Mm -hmm. In music, I'm just all right with just hearing it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, just to be said. This is not a comfortable thing for me. Like, I don't mm -hmm. really just say that amongst my brethren or whatever. And I think that has got a lot to do with the fact that, like, I was close with my grandparents. Like, mm -hmm. my granddad wasn't a man who spoke like that, but I grew mm -hmm. up in my grandparents' yard. And mm -hmm. I know their history. Mm -hmm. I, sp I spoke, my mum has spoken to me about their history. My granddad, before he died, I always remember sitting down on the chair with, uh, he was, like, in his later stages in life, like, not far away from passing away. Mm -hmm. He's passed away now. And I thought, you know what? I've never sat and had a proper conversation with him properly. Yeah. I've just always been around him. And I remember saying to him one day, after doing the shopping, I was like, Granddad, how did you get here? Mm -hmm. I don't know that part. Wow. How did you get here? Yeah. And, th and he just told me an amazing story, which is not for now, mm -hmm. about how he even got to England and just the things that he experienced when he came to England. First coming to England, thinking it's going to be hot. Getting here and it's black. Mm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. All the houses and stuff. You know, a lot of houses have got chimneys and stuff yeah, like yeah, that, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. They used to call it the black smoke. Every, well, all every, the smoke coming out of the chimneys. All the, yeah, all wow. the smoke was coming out of the chimneys. Every day they used to come and drop coal into people's houses and stuff mm -hmm. like that. Imagine coming from Jamaica and mm. see, like, do you understand mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But then also. And what's promised as well, that's the whole thing you forget is that a lot of people was promised something very different to 100%. what they saw. 100%. It's like, come here, come here, come here. It's going to be amazing. Trust me. Get you over here and then go, okay, now we don't want you here. but and it's terrible here. You know? Right, and then on top of that, it's like, you go to work, you're good at your job, and mm -hmm. no matter how good at your job, you're just a nigger. Mm. Yeah, there's a ceiling. You're just a nigger. Mm. And for me, it's like, for that, that part is close to mm, me. Mm, so mm. for that, I'm like, yeah, unless it's, unless it's in context, unless mm -hmm. we're having a conversation about the, but the reclaiming of yeah, it, yeah, do yeah. you know what I'm going to yeah, now yeah, say, yeah, yeah, yeah. this is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have it, but no one else can say it, mm -hmm. but, like, if you say it, I'm going to be so outraged about it. Mm -hmm. But then I can say it. Like, mm -hmm. to me, it just feels, it just feels weird. But I love the context in how you've used this but it's poem. Just, but it's like, it's like this, again, it's like these, these things are so complex, right? And I think everybody, everybody is entitled to their own feeling towards it. But I think, especially with this, it was like, for me, much like how Kanye West says on, what tune is it? Um, it all falls down. Even if I'm in the Benz, I'm still a nigga in the group, yeah, right, right? Right, right? It's like... I love hearing important words, much like half class, in context, because socially, politically, they have um, power, fuel, petrol within them, right? right? But I think to throw them around without giving any thought to the consideration and, and, and the, I don't know, like the, the, the gravitas of what they mean and what they have, like the power they have held before, I, you know, I, I, like, I don't see it myself. Mm. A lot, I think, because I, I say it a couple of times on this, and, and I think every time I say it, I'm saying it because someone else has said it to me. So I'm kind of speaking for other people, right? Mm. In the ways that I've been, you know, half caste nigga, all of these things. It's like, these are things that have been said to me. So when I'm reflecting on the story, I'm saying, well, that's the word they said. That's, the word right. the B that's what the BBC said. So I'm going to say it because the BBC said it. Do you know what right. I mean? I hear you, though. Just to end it. When Tchaikovsky sit down at the piano, and mix a black key with a white key is a half class symphony. If you want to read the poem, you can go and find it online. Um, every good album for me has a really good intro and a very good outro. Listening to the project in its entirety, I do want to go to the end quickly. Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I forgive you, I forgive you, I forgive you After everything we've been through Everything we've seen The Disney Channel on the screen Yo, I can't forget the screams Late at night clinging to the beans Wonder is he understanding what I mean Saying don't go now, yo, please Cause I was starting to believe The first 27 years a bad dream Finally found my feet Head low, walking through the streets Had these headphones filling up with beats My mind speaks, I'm hurt Still rosy in my cheeks Why do autumn leaves get to fall in peace When it's falling down on me I keep my hands where you can see Cause I can't be you fooling by police Felt you cool it in my jeans My back pocket split in the seams, I couldn't start the car, find the keys. Yeah, yo, I forgive you, I forgive you, I forgive you. And I hope that it continue after everything you've been through. 
Living a life that was sinful Slicing through my belly like a ginsu The birthday cake I bring you Know you feel, know you're about to cry I can see it in the corner of your eye There ain't nothing you can hide Looking off the phone out of pride Doesn't matter if you blow it in the skies Cause I'm knowing why Light pawn to E4 Bishop C4 That's light work Queen to F3 I can see more my best day I'm gonna stop there I know like You're opening up a lot in regards to your pups, right? Mm. How difficult was it to take that step to say, you know what, I'm having a child now. I'm gonna really try my best to reconnect with my dad. Mm -hmm. um, I just think it was important, you know, like I was saying before, I took, I took a, lot of, a lot of stuff from rap. You know what I mean? It really like it's changed my life, introduced me to the people I love, taking me around the world. And, and one thing that's that tried and tested in it is this idea of like, you know, a lot of my friends grew up with like about this school year, life. life going crazy. Yeah, go there's a lot like, you know, there's a lot of, a lot of my friends, pretty much all my friends grew up without their pups. And I don't know, like all of us are holding onto this big chip on our shoulders every day. We wake mm. up like with, a, with this grudge, with this anger, with this hate. And I, I guess something I just wanted to offer back into the world of rap, like the thing that I love so much was just this like, I don't know, what a gift it is to forgive someone else because you end up, yes, you, I'm like, you like break them free of the chains that you're holding them in, but you also set yourself free. Facts. And, and, and I found some from, from reconnecting with my father, which is a hard thing to do, man. You know, for anyone that's grown up without their father around, it's a hard thing to do because also it's not, it's not what the world wants you to do. You know what I mean? It's not what the music I was listening to wanted me to do. All my heroes, they go, fuck your dad, like, go give all the money to your mum. Mm. But I knew for my son that he needed to see deeper than just, grandfather his black grandfather do you know i mean like to see his history and his lineage but for me like i found real joy in it like in this new relationship and was able to get some closure and give myself some of the things that i didn't get when i was a kid what was the beginning like what was that first like what was the first what was that first bit like yeah yeah awkward was, yeah awkward and, and and heavy it's it's weird because it's scary to talk about this that's the camera that's looking at me yeah. It's scary to talk about this because it's like it's something that isn't talked about that much. But it's, it kind of felt like from having my son, it's something I had to do. And talking about it is something that's important. So I will talk about it. But just it is heavy, isn't it? But like, I guess it's just, it's scary because there's no blueprint. I haven't seen, like, there's nobody I could reach to. There's nothing in popular culture. There's no one I can go like, or well, the problem is I just haven't found it. But it's not readily available to go, okay, cool, I'm going to reconnect with my pups and go through all of this, this generational trauma. Because basically we're the first generation... I would say ever, as men, regardless of race, religion, sexual preference, anything, that has had the, um, the tools to do this task. Do you know what I mean? Like when I look at my father, what I realised over the course of this thing was that I, I, I was so angry with him when we first were talking and at first it was awkward, it was quiet, it wasn't, we weren't very like communicative. Right? He was teaching me to drive, so we weren't looking at each other. So it removed the... Um, it removed the like the confrontation because we're both like this. Right. Okay. So I'm not. I'm not saying fuck he's you. There, I'm not going fuck you. I'm going. He's like, like yeah, put the indicator yeah. on. I'm basically like, yeah, <laughs> fuck you, fuck you, whatever. <laughs> but, not, but, but I'm not seeing him. Yeah, so yeah. I'm not seeing it land. Wow. But then at some point, I, you know, after hearing about him and his grand, my grandfather, and my grandfather's father and all this stuff, it's like, how could my dad have done anything different with what he was offered? Do you know what I mean? My, my dad grew up in a in a kids' home. He grew up young. Um, black in like wherever, like somewhere in South, I don't need to say where he lives, but mm -hmm. it's like there was no, nobody around him was giving him the tools. Mm -hmm. So when it came to me existing, he had not been shown anything other than what he had been shown. Mm -hmm. So I, I couldn't expect him to do anything more, but I have been shown more. So I have a responsibility to, to use it. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? But yeah, the, the initial stage was it's just effort. Do you know what I mean? Like, grueling. Every time you're there, you're talking about something and it reminds you of, like, the time you was seven and mm. it's your birthday and you don't hear from men. Do you know what I mean? That shit's... Men don't talk about this shit. Do you mm. know what I mean? And we need to because it's a lot and you can't just go your whole life without addressing it. There's an emotional connection to so many different things in it. Like, yeah. one of the obvious things is music. You mm. can hear a song and the song could immediately take you back to a certain place, a certain moment, a certain person, a certain environment or whatnot. But also, yeah. so can words, mm -hmm. um, so can certain conversations or whatnot, or even a tone, mm -hmm. even a tone. And mm -hmm. 
So I could see how like, even when you're reconnecting with someone and how difficult and awkward it is and you're kind of maybe even addressing certain elephants in the room that mm -hmm. you, you, you go from, and you'll, you'll probably be good at talking about this maybe like, stepping into this dynamic, feeling like a man, mm -hmm. but then possibly in certain moments feeling like a boy now when you're sitting and having this, like, you, you know, these, I don't know, it's like a whole different part of you that is gone back, maybe even back a little bit when you're talking and that. It's like you, you go, you dig straight back into your childhood. Do, 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 you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Well, the, the really crazy thing is like with my son more maybe even than my father, like by being, by giving like, at this stage in, in our relationship, I'm pretty sure my dad had moved out. So like me and my son, like everything I do with him from this point forwards, I'm giving it to myself because I never had it before. Mm. So by being a father to my son, I'm, I'm already gaining all the things that I didn't have, you know, which is a heavy thing, but a beautiful thing because I am now my own father in some ways. Do you know what I mean? Because I, all of the stuff that I needed is within me mm. because I have to be the one who goes upstairs when it's dark or I'm the one who checks the noises downstairs, whatever right. the thing is, right? That's my job. But yeah, to, to, it's just a vulnerable thing. And I think that's why we don't do it and why my homies were all like, what, you're going to spend some time with your dad? Because none of us, it's not a safe, it doesn't make me feel safe right. at first because you're not going in going, this is going to work out, we're going to be homies. You know, I'm very lucky that that's how it's worked out, but that's not guaranteed. Mm. And what a scary thing to go into something that's this vulnerable without any guarantee, because it could just, you could be like, yo, I'm trying to sort this out. And they go, I'm down, but I'm not really down. And then right. they let you down again. And you know, right. how do you like, if it's hard to take when you're four, imagine how hard that is to take when you're 30. Right. Um, and I think that's the reason why a lot of people don't do it. But I think what was making me feel better was like, regardless, if it doesn't work out, I know that I have done everything in my power to open it up. And I think that's what I didn't want to have is when my son asked me to go, oh, if, we, if he never saw his granddad, it's like, yeah, because ah, maybe I should have emailed him that one, not email. That's, I know what you're saying. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, maybe I should have taken, my dad's old, he's not that old. But like, maybe I should have shouted him that time. Maybe we should have gone to his a little bit more. So as long as I know that I did everything I could, I can, I can rest. Do, do you know what I mean? 100. I think as well, it's like, Maybe sometimes you, we get to a point in life, yeah, where you realise that, you know what, like, our parents, yeah, was once just our age. Of course. And they were just flawed. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They're just flawed yeah. human beings. The same way that I am and you are, whatever, their flaw is different because obviously it's different time, different generation, mm -hmm. different circumstances or whatever, yeah. But I think, like, for a lot of us, we grow up naturally with like our parents are supposed to be our superheroes. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? My dad is supposed to be, yeah. you get what I'm saying? He's supposed to be Superman, my mum's mm. this, that, and whatever the, like they are our actual heroes. But then it doesn't, sometimes the actions of the parent doesn't necessarily match the mm. superhero. Mm. And it crushes the idea of what you thought it was supposed to be, especially considering that like, you look across the street or you go to school and it seems as though there's this thing over there that this is what it's supposed to be. Yeah. Why don't I have that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's almost like it's like a real life Instagram thing. You know, when you go on your phone and you're Facts. having a bad day and you see someone like whatever with their kid or their dog and their girl and their car yeah. and you're like, wow, why do I not have that? Yeah. It's just it's that magnified. It's, it will always exist, whether online or in the real world. But I think everyone's going through it. And that was something that was, that's what's quite beautiful is like when you, you know, when you become a parent or, or anything, when you, when, you, when you level up in any part of your life to the next step and you're still you, but you're doing things that you've seen your parents or older friends or peers do, you're like, right, okay, well, I'm doing this now and I'm flawed, which means everybody else who was doing it before must have been flawed too. Because mm. before that, you know, you, like you look at teachers, like my girlfriend's a teacher, my mum is a teacher. And when I was younger, I used to look at teachers like, before I really understood my mum's job, I would look at teachers like they weren't human. Do you know what I mean? Like they right, had no yeah, life. Same, same, Please same. look at them and go, okay, you're here to make sure that I get good grades. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you're kind of disciplining me, but also you're supposed to be like a mentor to me, right? right. And the same with parents. You look at my mum and go, like, when I'm not here, what do you do? Do you know what I mean? Because I'm like, I'm your life. Yeah. You keep me alive. You look after me. And then you become a parent and you, or you just get older and you start to see that your mum has a social life. Your father has a social life. They have issues yeah, yeah. like mentally, physically, whatever it is, there's yeah. stuff going on. They're human. Exactly. And it's a really beautiful thing. 
but it, it's magnified when you're a parent because you, you're just like, man, every time I see my mum, I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah. For something. Because yeah. you know I mean? my son will do something, I'm like, I'm sorry. Yeah. What, what, do you, what, do you, what do you feel like more so you, because I also can imagine, I'm not a father yet, but mm -hmm. I can imagine that like you have a child and straight away you're like, everything that I didn't get, mm -hmm. everything that I didn't get, which is mainly, and I think this is an interesting thing from like a man's perspective as well. It's like, that is not, a, it's not, the, everything that I didn't get is not necessarily a physical thing in regards to like buying stuff. It's more just mm, the yeah, emotional yeah. aspect of it. Like mm -hmm. everything I didn't get in that is that what I'm going to offer yeah. to you? Yeah. Is that the main thing that you have felt like you wanted to give your your kid, son? Yeah, son, my son. Your son. Like, what is that one of the main things that you wanted to give your child when you start when you became a dad? Yeah. Or was there was just, there something just, else deeper than that? Just consistency. Right. That was it. That's the only thing. I mean, it was just to be there. Because that's all you have to do is show up, I think, you mm. know? Because you're going to get angry. I've, I've been reading this beautiful book um, by Pippa Perry, who's Grayson Perry's wife. And it's about, it's, it's called um, The Book You Wish Your Parents Had Read and Your Kids Would Be Glad That You've Read. And there's a really interesting section on it about rupture and repair. And this, the idea is just that, you know, in any relationship, um, not just the father and son or mother and daughter, whatever, is there's going to be rupture, which is where you argue or you snap or you slam a door or whatever. And that's inevitable. Like, you cannot avoid these things happening. But really, the, the mark of, of a positive relationship is how you deal with that. Mm. It's the repair, right? So if, if I shout, if, if say if it's four o'clock in the morning and I've gone downstairs and me and my son are chilling and I've changed four nappies already and then he draws all over the wall, right? And I go, yo! In that moment, he might turn around and looks upset, run away, like, get sad. And I go over to him. If I go over to him and go, right, let's go to bed and don't say anything about it, I've failed in the situation. I haven't failed because I shouted at him. I failed because I didn't get to his level and go, yo, listen, dad's really stressed and he's really tired and I just reacted really poorly and I know I upset you. And next time this happens, let's see if there's a way where you yeah. can communicate with me a bit better and I can communicate with you so it don't happen, right? And that then gives him the emotional intelligence as he grows older to deal with his own mistakes and his flaws, mm -hmm. right? But that's all it is, is it's like trying to take the mistakes and deal with them in the moment, like tidy as you go. Mm. Don't leave the whole house messy and then look around and go, shit, I need to tidy this whole flat. Mm. It's like, okay, there's a little bit of a spillage over there. Let me mop that up. There's some dust over there. Let me sweep that up as soon as it happens. So that's, yeah, that's what, all I want to do. Talk me through this. I should see my father in me. That's why she argued with me. That's why they can't forgive me. I rock in a hard place, wearing a hard face Close the door, leave my house like I'm Scarface yeah. Sweet success that I can't taste Heard the bang, still finishing the last race Lapping me, a year ago your leg was clapping me Nobody told me that I lose it so rapidly I thought this was the kind of thing that goes gradually My hairline, the good guys, I was glad to be Grim Reapers catching me Yeah, yeah it's like I work for him I'm being punished for the times that I would sin When I tried to do right, still I did the wrong thing Yo, I thought I was a king Yeah, trouble yeah. yeah. um, in the What is it about? That's it's self explanatory I guess um, That just put you in the zone Yeah, yeah, I love that song It's one of my favourite songs I made that with this guy, um, Puma Blue um, Jacob and, and this guy Harvey Grant and Nick as well, shout out to Nick. Um, it's, it, it, it's, I guess it, it all came from a, a second verse I wrote, it was a little line I wrote for a different song that made its way onto this, was just like, I was thinking about my mum, because um, me, you know, like, I'm, I'm probably at times just as difficult as my father was, yeah. you know, for my girlfriend, and I was thinking about my mum, and there's this line that's like, the love is great, to raise the man that you hate, growing in the man that you make. And um, yeah, I, I guess, it's just what I was thinking about at the start of the song, just my mum. When my mum looks at me, she's my dad. My mum, my mum and my dad, they don't, I hope they don't hate each other no more, but they're not, they're not tight like that, you get me? And yeah, it's just a crazy thing. Like my mum's my entire life, she sees me be hot headed, stressful, disorganised, chaotic, all these things, right? So everything that my dad is, my dad, he's nice, he's a brilliant guy, but there's also flaws to him, right? And I never used to think, like, rah, it's not only that my mum, you know, I'm my father's son, I'm, like, Parts of me are my father, like the mm. way I look, the way I act, 
like, and then I think about that with my girl, like she's raising my son and on a day where I'm frustrating her, she's then got to turn to my son who's just going to do exactly the same mm, thing, you know? Mm. Um, it's just Unless like, he takes like more of his mother's trait. Yeah, no, no, for, for sure. But, but there's bits mm. of both of us, you know I mean? Mm. You can't escape it. Like for sure, I, I hope that he's like as calm as, as calm as his mum and as intelligent, I hope. You know, there's, there's, there's always a balance. There's, there's pieces of each of us in there. Mm. And yeah, I think it's just the power of, you know, especially a single, a single mum, like the love, like the power of that love to, to, to look past those things. And, and I guess my friend Barney, Barney Artist, he said it one time, you know, like to realise that, yes, you are a reflection of your father, but also you're a reflection of your mum, you know? Mm. And to, by being present, you're the one who's instilling all of the things that you want to see. Mm. Um, but yeah, it's just... It's beautiful, man. It's got my girl on it. Like, it's nice. It's a special thing. I love that, man. Hey, I love love, by the way. Can I just say that? I just love that. It's brilliant. I just love love. What is it like? <laughs> it's hard work. It's hard work to maintain it. It's, it's, like, it's like any living thing. You know what I mean? You have to give it time and attention and care. You know what I mean? You can't just be like, oh, I'm in love, so mm. sick. I'm going to go out with my friends. No? Yeah. <laughs> get me. Yeah, it's, hey, it's, it's, a, it's constant work. It's constant work. It's different, obviously, as well, when you have a child. Like, you bond differently now, yeah. but, like, yeah. it's a whole, there's a, a whole another human being in the house. And, like, you yeah. know, it's funny, this, these flies. Um, I'm sure you probably had this as well, right? Going to the hospital, mm -hmm. your girlfriend's just um, giving birth, mm -hmm. and then you leave the hospital, and then you get home, and you've got a whole human being in your yard yeah, with no manual there's no with man no, there's manual. no manual that's crazy and you're just a, and you're a dad you're now. a dad yeah you're a dad and like whatever you know like two hours ago you weren't a dad right before you left for the hospital you weren't a family you was just a couple right yeah it's crazy i just think it's so incredible think about how many ancestors all of us have yeah, that survived and did this yeah. I just, it's crazy that there's, but there's, that there's still no map. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there's still nothing. There's still like, and it will forever change. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. always, there will always be a different way of doing mm. stuff. Um, it's just within you though. I remember, I remember as soon as my girlfriend gave birth, I had this really weird thought. I couldn't stop thinking like, I need to find like a cave or some tall grass to hide in. The most like primal, like caveman thought. But it, I couldn't, I couldn't get it out of my head. I was like, where can I? Where can I take us? Where can I hide? Forgetting that I have a house, do you know what I mean? Just this whole, <laughs> this whole caveman just took That's over. That's too funny. Um, is the world going fast for you as well? Is the world moving fast for you as well? And yo, I can't tell if it be only me. Missed another birthday, we're shelling overseas. Photo of police on my road, belly of the beast. I've been hidden in the east. So I'm on my P's and my Q's, trying to find a piece of my youth. Cause on them late nights, we be getting bruised. The people wanna dance, they don't wanna hear the truth. They got no loving for no niggas on the news. Sorry, Alpha, but they won't listen if I sing the blues like a blood. And yo, we learned nothing from the crud. We just lost a lot of figures in the city that we love. Yo, it's bugged. Cause they be looking to above And I'm like, bruv, look at what's in front of you Look at what love can do, look how they corrupted you Trying to put trust in any other instead of trust in you Ah, oh, the world moving fast for you as well And yo, I can't tell if it be only me Shit uh, And yo, I can't tell if it be only me Is the world moving fast for you as well And yo, I can't tell if it be only me Shit uh, uh. Where did this come from? Um... Yeah, like, I guess partly, like, was just maybe grieving my youth a little bit, you know what I mean? Like, because when you, when you, yeah, when you're like, the, and there's another generation in your, in your family, you're no longer the youngest. So, I don't know, I was like, yo, there's all these other things I was meant to do. What the hell? Like, how am I already here? I've, I only just started in this thing. Like, I just feel like I only just started making music and making money. And, mm. um, yeah, it was funny. I think this, this, this was all, like, a lot of this music was in a period of time where I was with Alpha. Who I mentioned on that, um, which is another example of, of using these words that have weight and 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 not using them, not using them for no reason, but using them when 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 I'm talking about what people talk about me as or what mm. they talk about my friends as. You know? That's why I say sorry to Alpha because he's like, yo, we don't should be saying those words because they're powerful. Wow. Um, but yeah, like it, it was just one of those things where it, it felt so nice to be writing like this, to just be like. Yeah, just 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 free. You know what I mean? Not really, not really thinking too much about what people would think or what they would say, but just like what I wanted to say in the moment. What felt nice to just get off my chest. When do you feel like you're operating in your highest frequency? 
Like, where is that? What does that look like? Is that in a studio? Is it at home? Is it is it is it at a show? Like, is there a process in where you're doing a, a bunch of things um, together mm. that that puts you in that space? Like, where when do you feel like you're working at your highest frequency? I think it's when it can be anywhere. It can be show, studio, on set, if I'm directing a video, if I'm in a video, whatever. In the, but more time, it's like behind the scenes when the, the initial idea is, a, is like arriving. So, you know, if I have an idea for a music video or a film or a song or artwork or whatever it is, mm. when I just begin to let myself drift away from the expectations, you know what I mean? And, and the fear of failure and all that stuff and just lean into the possibilities. Mm. You know, like to be, to be a kid, really, I think. Because to work in the creative world is, is a, bit of a, a bit of a blessing because you get to still be, a, you get to play. Mm. And all the best stuff comes out of play. So I think when I'm playing, you know what I mean? When I'm like, oh, yo, what if, what, what if we did this? What if I said this, but really it meant that? Or what if it, you thought it looked like this, but then a minute later it looks like that? Just, yeah brainstorming I guess just even going to like again the comparison element of the music you're talking about playing just there but it's like this is one of the things I like about this project so much yeah and I'm 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 so glad that this has come as your third album too because as I said earlier on it's like it this gives you the opportunity to be able to express a little bit more creatively mm -hmm. even with these things that you're you want to say but sonically too. And there's like one part in this, in, it comes out a lot in the production, but like there's one bit in the song that like really stood out to me as well. Mm -hmm. Just super lightly, but it was this. Here's a warning of some abusive language. A recent assault on a health worker resulted in serious injuries and his attacker shouted at him, calling him. Could you with your plastic watch, yeah, and your plastic wit, uh, with your plastic friends, yeah, and your plastic chip, your plastic prick, look at all your plastic shit, yeah, there's the plastic notes, you yeah, see there's the plastic shit, yeah, plastic slips, with a plastic BBC, with a plastic N-I-double-G-E-R on the broad day TV. Plastic guys like me, plastic and I do what you are on the broad day TV. I love that. Mm. Who, who produced this? By the way? Uh, Quez. Quez, yeah. Shout out to Quez, yeah. So a lot of it was jams and then I, I linked up with Quez and um, my, my engineer Nick and we began to like work to try and turn them from just like little moments in a room to things that maybe felt a bit more cinematic, mm. you know, and, and wired. Um, but yeah, really with this, you know, because this, this, is, this, this is referencing the BBC, you know, one of the many times, like, across the album where people are kind of coming at me, like, whether it's personally or to the whole community, racially, do you know what I mean? And, and, and um, yeah, I kind of, when I, when, I, when I was talking to Quez, when, when I gave him the demo and we were sat with it, I was saying, like, I want it to feel like the start of the song is like, you know, you're on your phone, you're on your feed or whatever, on the news, and you're flicking through and it's like a couple of nice things, like an interview with a guy that you like, you know, like, oh, these trainers that you like, they're on off or whatever. And then you flick a bit further and you just see something crazy. It can be really triggering. A kid could have lost their life, whatever. And you're looking at it for a sec and it becomes, everything becomes really menacing and dark because that's what it is. It's, it's horrible to be reading this stuff. And then just as quick as that, you can just swipe away. Do you know what I mean? They'll close your phone and it's gone. And that's why I wanted this song to feel like, that it like lulls you into this full sense of security, like Instagram or whatever. Where mm. You go on and you get shown a couple of things that are nice. So like, oh, this is nice and then something that you don't like pops up and you're forced to look at it and you can't look away, but then all you've got to do is close your phone and then two minutes later, it's, it's gone from your mind, you know what I mean? So that's like, it was kind of the fickle nature of, of this shit because I remember when this shit happened and... What happened? What happened? Yeah. On the BBC? Yeah. You know about it. What happened? Um, just a uh, news reporter was reporting that, uh, uh, like one of many cases of abuse that this guy was receiving but she says nigger on, on a broad day at like, oh, yeah. at like seven. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. At seven and, and yeah, like it was it just happened when we was in the studio. That's it's cause that's why it's on the other tune, because me and Arthur were talking about it a lot. 
because he was saying you're much in the same school of thought of mine is that like I appreciate words all words when they're used in context and when they're needed but still it does depend who is saying it and when and with what for and with, for what reason do you know what I mean and, and, and if there's if there's if you can get away with having the same conversation without it have the conversation without it get me yeah, what's, I mean? the, what's the desperation? Get me, but that's, it's the same with any forbidden word. Do you know what I mean? It's like when, you, when you're first allowed to swear when you're younger. Do you know what yeah, I mean? it's, it's like, maybe like a kid when a kid says sex. It's as soon as, as soon as you're allowed. And I think that's the thing that maybe, maybe that's the one thing about it that I do respect within hip hop. The way it did kind of was go, make it go from a thing of like, oh, it's so taboo, you can't say it. Some men want to say it still to being like, it's on every song. Who ca- like, it's almost like, you're not going to hurt me with it no more. Do you mm. know what I mean? At least. But yeah, it was just, it was so shocking. And, and, but I wanted to kind of reflect it in a way that was like holding not only the BBC accountable, but whoever, like when The Guardian thought that Kano was Wiley, you get me, because that's a lyric on it. It was, just, it was just me looking at, and myself, like how much of a consumer I am, you know, with my new iPhone and my, my, my new shoes and my nice watch. Like everybody is caught up in this bullshit thing where it's so like fast food. Right. You know? and, and so it starts with me holding everyone else accountable. And then at the end, I just flip it on myself and go, I am the same. I don't know, man. It's, uh, I'm at a stage where like no, nothing surprises. I don't get yeah. shocked much anymore. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know whether that is a good thing or a bad thing, but it's like, or, or whether that is like part of just my, who I've become as a man now, where I am quite laid back. I still feel rage. Of course I do. Mm-hmm. And I know that like what is wrong is wrong. But like, yeah, when these type of things happen, I mean, it just, I mean, I just don't really get, I just don't really get so surprised at it it's anymore. It's heartbreaking. And it's, that's... To be numb, so numb to it's it. It's so mad. To, yeah. the, the fact that I've yeah. been, I've become so numb to it is yeah. just even, a, I guess, a problem within itself, right? Yeah. Uh, that's like on the, on the Kendrick album where they're talking about, that's why you've got to lean into the next gen. And the, like the kids that are younger than you, because like, at, at a certain point, it's like what Tupac says at the end of the Tip and Butterfly, it's like when you get to a certain point in your age, you're already you're so beaten down by seeing it every day that you just kind of just you just I don't know you just you just sit in your spot you kind of go okay cool this is I've I've affected enough change but I just can't it's so exhausting mm. to use my brain every day to fight for myself and to speak up on the outrage and whatever you get me and so I think especially why I spend so much time with people that's a bit younger than me is because mm. they they still have that fight do you right. know what I mean? and and I think the older you get. You can lose it. Not everyone loses it, but it's exhausting. Like mm-hmm. you say, it's like when I see every day, you know, another kid like that grew up where I grew up, but they lost their life, or do you know what I mean? Or so and so is caught up in this, or, or I'm on the BBC and, and and the people in my community is being reflected in this way. It's like, at what point? Do you know what I mean every like if you wake up every morning and you're outraged, you'd be outraged every thirty minutes. Mm. Do you know what I mean? So I think you need to yeah lean on on those who are newer to the world to go like. To, to, to follow them and yeah. let them lead the outrage, do you know what I mean? And then, like, certain elements of it is just, like, you know, we do what we can and then there's a rest that is above our head a little yeah, bit. Yeah. The impact of knife crime on individuals is undeniable. And while politicians wish to police their way out of knife crime epidemic, it is simply not possible. We must focus on the root causes of knife crime. Poverty inequality, austerity, and a lack of opportunity. We must petition the government to put reason over rhetoric, compassion over difference, equality over austerity, as knife crime claims more lives within our country. Never has so much been lost by so many because of the indecision of so few. The indecision of so few is like, I had, I had not heard that before, by the way. I'm sure that that's come from... That's really incredible because I was worried, with, not worried, but like in my head, because it, kind of, it kind of went a bit viral. Oh, at some point, Atian Akej, who that is, right. is a youth Labour MP. And that's him, that's him speaking in Parliament in a day when um, all of the youth MPs get a chance to speak um, on their chosen subject, right? And he's one of the last ones and he's got this piece of paper. It's like this young... Like a beautiful, skinny kid, do you know what I mean? Like full exactly exactly what I was just talking about, right? Yeah. Like, yes, I still feel it and I want to express it, but I'm older, I'm and I'm being beaten down by the world. And so leaning on him was important for me. But what it was is a lot of people I knew actually had heard it. Mm. And I was like, oh, I shouldn't put this in. And then I was like, no, fuck that, because as much as people in my world have heard it, you know what I mean, and I'm preaching to the choir, it goes to show because you're in my world and you ain't even heard it, which is good. 
But like, there's so many people outside who need to hear this, who maybe I can be a Trojan horse for, you know what I mean? So they might go, oh, like, I love Lokan, he's a nice guy. You get me? And then they listen to my album and then they get to hear Atian. And for me, that's the power is that then Hundreds. he then, he takes this message on further because he puts it so much more eloquently and beautifully than I could. And this song comes <coughs> just before um, Plastic, which plays. And the idea of that is that he kind of picks apart society, government, do you know what I mean? Like these negative Western ideals. And then straight afterwards, I kind of agree with him in more of a disrespectful way. Yeah. You know I mean? and, I, and, I, and I like that. But yeah, this, this kid, man, like I spend a lot of time with him now and Yo, just yeah. It's nice to know that Can the world is. Can you excuse me to him? I tell yeah, hell yeah, yeah. definitely, definitely. He should, you should get him on here. Yeah, I'd, I'd like to talk to him. I would bring him on the podcast. Actually. He's a special kid, special. And kid. have and have a, and have a conversation with him. Mm. Um, I kind of just want to sort of end it a little bit on like, you know, and it's, I guess there's an element of this that ties in. Is there's so much pe- there's so much people that are at a young age that come from certain type of community or whatever wherever it may be in the country and don't feel like they just fit in mm-hmm. to what the the world or a sound or mm-hmm. art or whatever it is has to offer for them, like they do something different. You see, for you, like when you were obviously growing up and whatnot, mm-hmm. you've had that feeling of feeling different mm-hmm. already mm-hmm. and probably not feeling like you fit in. Yeah. Do you feel that like musically as well? Oh, hell yeah, for sure. Um, and it's crazy because it used to make me sad, but I, don't, I think standing out is the best thing you can do, right? You have to embrace it. But when, like, That's when where I, the value is now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was funny because you know, when I grew up, I grew up on whatever, MTV Base, Flavor, Channel U, then watching F64s and Daily Duffies and Link Up Behind Bars and all these things and like Whiskey Rose. And I was like, okay, cool. That's, I saw myself reflected and I was like, I'm going to be that. You get me? And then, you know, more influence came. I had other influences. My mum's playing Bob Dylan in the house and funk and soul and whatever. And then I'm hanging out with guys like Tom Mish. And you know, the music I was creating, to me, was an evolution of, of this stuff I grew up on. But I came up and like, kind of came up around the side. And, you know, like, I think at first I was like, well, why can't I just, like, why can't I just be like everyone else? And then at first I just wanted to fit in. But I feel quite lucky that, I was able to and you know was around the people that let me just be something else because I think it's helped a lot of people who are young like me that are inspired by the same things as me but just express it differently you know I think there's such it's such a limitation placed upon ourselves and I still feel it like as a rapper because being even being a rapper like the word the idea of it is kind of bullshit because it's like in any other genre of music you know like like Anthony Kiedis from Red Hot Chili Peppers, right? That guy's definitely in, influenced by rap. In fact, I know he is because I've, I've read his autobiography. But he, sometimes he raps, sometimes he sings, sometimes it's eight bars, it's 16, then it's two bars, it's one word. He could scream it, shout it, whatever. No one has ever been like, yo, you're a rapper, you're a singer, you're an indie artist. He's just an artist. But I think rap, because it, it, there's so much gatekeeping around it still, so much pressure, and also so much like love for it and wanting to make sure that this is something that's preserved as this beautiful thing that we hold, do you know what I mean? As, as forgotten youth, as ostracised people, as others, that like, it becomes internalised because now I look, I might make a song and go, I really don't want to rap no more. I've, I've said eight bars and go, but I can't do that because if I do that, then people say, oh, I didn't, it's not a whole 16, it's not a whole verse or whatever. It's bullshit. And I don't do it anymore, but I think we've got to move away from like this idea that you have to be this certain thing. And that's why I'm excited about it with the next gen. That's why I love slow tie. Because when I listen to slow tie's music, like, yeah, guy's sick at rapping, but he's not a rapper, he's just an artist. Mm. He can sing, fine. He can rap, fine. He can do anything, whatever he wants to do, fine. Like, it, doesn't, it doesn't matter. He just goes, yeah, I'll do this now. And, and I think that that's like what I would like to see more of and, 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 and what I would say to the next gen. Look at Jimi Hendrix. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, facts. I mean, look, I think the thing that is the sickest, yeah, from a fan's point, from a fan point of view, and from someone that studies a lot of what's going on, I just feel like it's so sick that we have a bunch of different artists that can coexist around the same time mm. and do keep their head down and do their thing. I do think like, I mean this in the sense of like, you know what, like you, I remember we was talking about shows a while ago, mm. and usually you'll hear like people talk about, you know, 
this person doing this venue. So, mm -hmm. you know, like Skepta did Alexandra Palace mm -hmm. or, you know, Dave did this or whatever. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, yo, but Loyal did that as well, though. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And there's like, I think it's sick that you can have two different types of artists that can now, we're at a stage now, can do these types of venues. Do you know what I mean? And travel around and all over the world and whatnot. I yeah. do think there's a section of like uh, media, yeah. black media in particular, that don't talk about you as enough as much as I would like them to. Mm -hmm. But um, and it's a certain. I think it's not just you. I think it's like a certain side of of rap music. Do you get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But what is your what is your feeling on that? Are it's, you? It's fine. I, like you can only you. You gotta go where the love is. I think sometimes, and and things will come with time. I'm not mad at, at any of it. I, you know, like you're right. We just sold out Wembley. Oh shit! Yeah, I just yeah. saw that as well. Quickly before the album even dropped. Get me? So, yeah, 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 yeah. Like and being away for this. Sorry, I just want to add some more sauce to this. Being away for time, being off the socials and all that true, type of stuff. Like it's not even like you've been outside, just in fully engaging on the net to keep your name alive or whatever else it was. Boom! I've just come back. I'm just gonna show a couple of people what I've been doing. By the way, I got an album that comes out, and there's a tour if you want to come. The whole thing just sells out. It's incredible, bro. It's special, but I think, yeah, like I don't know, man. Like I, I, I don't know. I feel like. Things happen with time. You can't, you can't, you can't go. Oh, I really wish I was on that podcast, or I really wish uh, those people was talking about me. You just have to make it, and it will happen. Mm. Do you know what I mean? You can't do it because you want people to talk about it. You got to do it because you need to do it. But I think with time, the conversation is open. I think that someone I'm a big fan of, Nux, oh, and someone God. I'm very cool with, he I think has done some things that I couldn't do. He really, he really opened more doors and and has helped me into a few conversations. Do you know what I mean? And and with that, I've been able to take whatever reading and, you know, like listening I've been doing into those rooms and, and offer what I can, you get me? But it's an evolution. Everyone's standing on the shoulders of the next person. Um, but yeah, I just like, that's why I'm, I'm happy to be doing this with you. I wanted to do this for a long time because you're one of the people that's really like t t tapped in and, 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 and pushed past the stereotype because it's liberating, you know, mm -hmm. like to think about Donald Glovers and all these people of, of there's so much more available right. if we can step away from the pressures that the outside world puts upon us. But then internally, because of that pressure, we kind of go, okay, well, that's the standard. That's the standard we're going to keep. Do you right. know what I mean? Right. I think there's so much more of that. And someone like Nux is beginning to like chip away at that bullshit, you know? I think Nux is, Nux is one of the coldest, coldest. like, that, that is coming out and that has been coming out over coldest. the last And he's um, been about years. for a long time. I know, so. I know, I know. That's what's so and do you know what? I tell you what I like, yeah? which is a little synonymous to you as well, is that like, he just kept his head down and done mm -hmm. his thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like he kept his head down and done his thing. I was talking to an artist that like, um, a young up and coming artist just recently, yeah, super, super, super talented. He lives on my road. Mm -hmm. And um, he came to me and he was playing some music and whatnot. And like, he played me one tune that was sick. Mm -hmm. Then he played me another tune that was sick. Then he played me a third tune that sounded Central Sea-ish. And I remember saying to him, bro, like, the value is you, you know? Like, the value is just you. Mm. Even if you wanted to do, like, jump on a sound like that, mm. like, find your way of doing it. Like, find just you, just be you on that. Because ultimately, you see, when that, what, when that dies, not to say that that sound's going to die, but I'm just saying whatever it is that you are the trying to be a part move. of, yeah, yeah, yeah. that move dies then you die with that. And if that's not your authentic self, mm -hmm. you've died with something that isn't your authentic yeah, self. Yeah. At least if you are just you, you keep your head down doing your thing and for and one day, because everything's going to come to an end mm -hmm. at some point, mm -hmm. one day it does, at least you can always look at yourself mm -hmm. in the mirror and say, you know what, I kept my head down and I've done my thing. But they, 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 yo, that's, but that's, that's exactly what, what I think. Yeah, like, but it's always going to go up and down as well, right. right? And I think that's the scariest bit is if it's going well one minute and then you're doing the same thing and it starts to not go as well it's easy to go okay cool let me jump on the next thing but the whole idea is that you know like now everyone's wearing baggy jeans again all the kids are dressing like how they were dressing in the 90s again out of nowhere the 2000s now it's like it's always going to keep coming back around so as long as you stick to your thing as long as you enjoy it and evolve because you have to evolve you can't just go oh, i'm going to do the same thing from now to the end of time because it won't excite you, do you mm. know what i mean that's why that's why i switched it up on this is because what i was making at the beginning it doesn't excite me as much anymore, you know, mm. because I've moved past that.
but you have to keep it true to yourself and just know that whatever, maybe in 20 years, there might be a song I make that like no one likes right now. And then in 20 years time, everyone's like, yo, I love this shit. You know what I mean? It's the same, I'm, like all of my favorite albums from recent time to Pimmer Butterfly, Hoodies All Summer. Um, when I heard these albums at first, I was like, I don't know, man. Do I mean, I felt really uncomfortable with them because they was pushing me. And now Hoodies All Summer, that's like, Oh yeah, that's one. Of, uh, that's a to me classic. For that, me. That's a, the, that's a like, classic. For and me. that's not even a UK classic. That's just like a rap for me in general. That's, that's a rap classic. Not even a rap classic. That's just musically yeah. a classic. But it's, it goes to show that at first I wasn't ready to receive it. Mm. I remember I listened on holiday one time and went, "Fuck," and then I listened again on the plane home, and within the space of like five days, it was the best album I'd ever heard. Oh my god! You know, and that, that's what I, I like. About, he's again one of the few takes that time away and comes back and it's like and I, I I love now that like you know watching Kano from the the beginning mm. to seeing him now is like I love this stage now where it's like I feel like okay boom when he comes back out he's gonna tell me something mm. like mm -hmm. he's gonna tell me he's something's he's feeling something mm. and that could be anything his next album could just be about you know I don't know mm. you know being a dad or be, being married, I don't know, it could be whatever anything, it is. Yeah, Do you get what I'm saying? It could just yeah. be anything. It yeah. could just be, you know what I mean, falling back into the road again or yeah, he, whatever yeah, it yeah, is. Yeah, but yeah, I just yeah. know that when he comes back, he's yeah. got something to say and I, and I love that. And there's a craft to it as well. Uh, Do you know what I mean, it's like, it's the same way. It's like, I see Kano as the same way I see Kendrick. Mm. I mean, I know he would like that as well because I know that he's a fan. Mm. But, but it's true because when, when, like, when Kendrick drops, I know whether or not like, the world's going to love it because sometimes it's up and down depending on what it is. I know that there's going to be like a lot of hard work in it, creative, original ideas, and a message. Yeah, yeah. But it'll also be packaged in a beautiful way. I just, yeah, that's what you want to build, right? Is like when you drop your thing, people are like, oh, I can't wait for this person to drop this thing because no one can drop it like this person. Right. And everybody has the potential to do that. Right. Yeah. Bit, by the way, I love to pimp a butterfly. Hell I know yeah. some, it's like a polarizing album, but I love it. Hell yeah, and I love it. Um, Hugo. Classic, yeah, Hugo. Yeah, my album. The name? Where does that come from, by the it's way? The name that, of the album. Is that that's not your dad's name, is it? No, no, no. What is what is that? Why that's, did you use that? That's the name. That's the name of my dad's car. Oh, swear. Yeah, yeah. My dad's car is called Hugo. This is a little polo, like a VW polo, from '98, red one. Oh, is it? So wait, is that in the, the replica in the video as yeah, well? Yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. that's sweet. the actual car. That's the actual car. That's the actual car. Yeah, yeah. In hate, right? In hate, yeah. Oh, um, right. Yeah, we're doing a pop-up shop, actually, and, and the car's going to be in there, so you can go in and Sit. listen. The, the album was made to be listened to in the car, actually. Cause yeah, I was, but the reason is, you know, the album is about learning to drive with my dad, really, if you boil it down. It's about me and my dad doing something mundane that allowed us the space to talk mm. and being able to hash it out. And it wouldn't, the album wouldn't exist without that car. Because to, in my mind, all of the stories, all the inspiration, all of the topics, you know, um, all come out of that, mm -mm. come out of that whip. So, yeah, it made sense to call it that. Well done, bro. This is such an impressive album, man. Yeah, I've really enjoyed listening to it and I'm going to listen to it a lot more. I appreciate um, it. I'm looking forward to seeing how some of this sounds live as well. Yeah, we've um, got a band now. I'm excited for that. Huh? We've got, got a band, band now yeah, as well, band, yeah. 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 Are you happy? Yes. Yes. I think I'm, sure? I'm on the right track. Yeah. Do you know what's funny? It's such, it's such a bullshit question because I've been asked it so many times. I'm not saying it's a bullshit question from you. But like, it's just a question that is unfair sometimes when if you're not in a good space because you don't want to say yeah. And there's been times before I said yeah and I don't mean it. But for sure, I'm stressed, yeah. I'm anxious. Yeah. But happiness is not about being happy every day. Right. For me now. Right. So I can have a shit day, but really I'm happy. Right. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. We'll leave it there. Hugo out now, yeah? Yes. Love for bro. Really appreciate you coming and doing this, man. Honestly. Honestly, you. man. No, you Impressive me. album, bro. Thank you, bro. Well done. Say, I told the black man he didn't understand. I reached the white man, he wouldn't take my hand. I sat alone in the shadows of a man with my eyes closed. Told myself I should have ran. I'm the boss, and I'm supposed to have a plan. But can't think till I figure who I am. Are you lost, huh? or are you just another man? Sitting in my sunshine, trying to catch a tan. Listen, outside, I can feel the sun's rain. I love it. Inside, I was bumping John Wayne. Made peace, you can never say the wrong name. ADHD, say my last one long game. I don't fuck it up, say reveal nothing. Guys, I used to run with a steady still puffing. But what did they expect? Yo, what did
that they expect Hey yo, I never used to think of the effect When my dad passed, straight biological neglect The other one, sunset, sitting on the steps I was left, mum came, heavy in her breath Tears on my face, transferring to her chest I was left, and she would say he ain't coming